Hello class, we are continuing on the cardiovascular system. I just wanted to show you this picture, this beautiful picture by Alex Gray. Go to his website, alexgray.com. He has some gorgeous anatomy type drawings. I have multiple signed posters of his. I just love his work. Anyway, alexgray.com. So let's get started. This video is basically just going to go through the heart. It should be a short video um, where the heart is located and talk about the pericardial sac and the heart wall. So let's get started. Here is our first picture. This is the classroom model. So where is the heart located? It is in the thoracic cavity. So we have the ribs and the sternum removed, but here is the heart in between the two lungs in the thoracic cavity. So the lungs have partially been removed to show you the full outline of the heart. And the other thing to note is here's the diaphragm right here. So the heart is basically sitting right on top of the diaphragm. These are what we call the great blood vessels of the heart. The blood vessels that are bringing blood into the heart and out of the heart. So the great blood vessels of the heart. This is going to be our base. We talk about the base of the heart. It's right here where the great blood vessels are coming out of. And the apex is this little point down here. So now the heart has been removed. And do you remember what this was called? Remember day one when you guys were all newbies in anatomy? What was this area called? This is the mediastinum. So the heart is going to be located within the mediastinum. Here's just another um, diagram showing you the sternum and the ribs, how the sternum and the ribs help protect the heart. Remember, the heart is just deep to the sternum and the ribs. And what else? Oh, here's the apex. So you notice most of the heart is towards the left side. Here's the right side of the heart right here. You see the right atrium. But the bulk of the heart is going to be left of center. Again, this is showing you the apex and the base of the heart right here. Just another view. I don't know why. I just want to show you multiple views so you get it in your head. Here is the sternum. Here is the sternal angle. Do you guys remember why the sternal angle was important clinically? What rib is going at the junction of the sternal angle? It's rib number two. Again, here's the diaphragm showing you the heart sitting right on top of that diaphragm. Now, on this picture, we are act it's actually showing you the pericardium. We haven't seen the pericardium yet. Peri means what? Peri means around heart, around the heart. So it is a structure around the heart. So we're going to be looking at the pericardial sac next. But before we do that, a little review of serous membranes. You also learned this the first day of class so long ago. The serous membranes of the heart. These are, it's a double layered membrane. We have an inner visceral pericardium. Remember, viscera means organ. So the visceral pericardium is the layer that's right on top of the heart. It's right on top of the heart. The outer membrane is the parietal pericardium. And in between these two 
membranes is the pericardial cavity, a space, and that space is filled with serous fluid. That serous fluid is secreted by the serous membranes, and that serous fluid, what was its function? It was a lubricant to prevent friction because the heart is a moving organ. So we want to prevent friction as that heart is beating away. It's going to be in a frictionless environment. And what type of epithelium are your serous membranes? If you even remembered your serous, ep um, serous membranes were epithelium. Do you remember what type? Was it simple? Stratified? Pseudostratified? Do you remember? It was simple squamous, and it had a special name. Sim simple squamous special name was mesothelium. So mesothelium, remember, was the simple squamous of the serous membranes. So simple squamous, one layer thick. So if you were in class, I would have you draw this. This is a very simple diagram of one great blood vessel, and I kind of drew a basic outline of the heart in pencil. So this is a great blood vessel with the heart, and around the heart, right on top of it, is in this orange reddish color, this is the visceral pericardium. The visceral pericardium is right on top of the heart. And then it's going to go up to the great blood vessels of the heart. And it's going to turn around and wrap around to become the parietal pericardium. And the parietal pericardium goes all the way around the heart. And it wraps around. Remember, this is a closed double membrane. And within this space in between the visceral and parietal pericardium, this is called the pericardial cavity. Pericardial cavity, remember, cavity just means it's a space. And this is where we have our serous fluid. Got that? Now, since this is only simple squamous, one layer thick, and the heart is doing all this beating, we are going to add an outer layer. We're going to call it the fibrous pericardium. And this outer fibrous pericardium is actually made up of dense, irregular connective tissue. Now, this fibrous pericardium is also going up to the great blood vessels, and it is fusing with the parietal pericardium. So these structures, the parietal pericardium and the fibrous pericardium are fused together. So this heart covering, this pericardial sac, has three layers. We have the fibrous pericardium fused to the parietal pericardium, and then we have our pericardial cavity and our visceral pericardium. So this whole structure is called the pericardial sac. Peri meaning around cardial, that's around the heart, referring to the heart. So remember that. This is the pericardial sac, a.k.a. the pericardium. Now, if we were going to be doing a heart dissection, which I wish we were this semester, this is how we get our sheep, our pig hearts. We try to get them with their pericardium attached so you can actually see this pericardium. You can barely see the heart underneath here. There's a lot of fat here too, but this is the fibrous pericardium that you are seeing. It is around the heart. And remember, just deep to this fibrous um, pericardium is the parietal pericardium that's fused to it. So when we're doing a heart dissection, the first thing we would have to do would be to get rid of that pericardium. 
that outer pericardium. So you, you would put your uh, little scissors under here and you would cut through this outer pericardial sac. So this is your fibrous pericardium and fused to it is the parietal pericardium. And on top of the heart is the visceral pericardium. Remember the visceral pericardium is fused to the heart. If this sac was still intact, this would be where your serous fluid would be flowing in this space between the parietal pericardium and the visceral pericardium. So in the cadaver, our cadaver, we have this, this is, um, this is the outer fibrous pericardium with, in this shiny part is actually the parietal pericardium that's fused to it. So we've cut through this outer fibrous pericardium, parietal pericardium, and we reflected them back, pulled them back. Here is the heart. It has some fat on top of it, but the visceral pericardium is still attached to the heart itself. Now here, if we would take our heart, we can get the, our probe under the visceral pericardium. See this? I don't know if you can see it, but if you look closely, closely right here, you will see that thin, thin layer of visceral pericardium. That is simple squamous. It's only one layer thick. Now, this is on top of the heart. So we are also going to call this the epicardium. It's the same as the visceral pericardium. The parietal pericardium and fibrous pericardium have been removed. So this is what you're seeing now is just the top of the heart, which has the visceral pericardium, AKA epicardium. Now in these drawings, these drawings are actually showing you the pericardial sac. It's been cut away to show you the, the anterior surface of the heart. But down here, you see this white stuff down here? The fibrous pericardium is actually has another function too. It is anchoring the heart to the diaphragm. So another function of that fibrous pericardium, anchoring it to the diaphragm to keep that heart in place. Here's a side view. If you can follow it, we see the visceral pericardium. It's all in reddish orange, wraps around to the parietal pericardium. And then we have the outer fibrous pericardium that is fused to the parietal pericardium. And the black space right here is the pericardial cavity where we have what? What's in that pericardial cavity? Serous fluid made by the serous membranes. Yes. Now this picture, I believe, is on your worksheet. It's just showing you a close-up of this per the, the pericardial sac. Here's the fibrous layer fused to the parietal layer. Parietal layer will go back upon itself and form the visceral pericardium. Here's the pericardial cavity filled with serous fluid. This is the myocardium. Myo means what? Myo means muscle. This is the muscle of the heart. This is heart muscle. And lining the inside of the heart is something we call, we're going to call it endocardium. Endocardium inside the heart. So if you look at this diagram down here, we know this is a, a ventricle. This is the left ventricle. Here we see the fibrous pericardium, parietal pericardium, 
The little dark space is the pericardial cavity filled with serous fluid. The visceral layer of the pericardium is right on top of the myocardium. Remember, the visceral layer is also called the epicardium. Here is the myocardium. And the innermost layer that's lining all the heart chambers is the endocardium. So you need to know the three layers of the heart wall. From outer to inner, it's going to be epicardium. Remember, epicardium is aka the visceral pericardium. The myocardium, the largest layer of the heart wall. This is all cardiac muscle because basically the heart is a pump. It's a muscle pump. This is myocardium. And then we are the inner lining is endocardium. That is also simple squamous. This endo, endocardium is simple squamous. So when the blood flows out into our great blood vessels, that endocardium is going to become, become endothelium. Remember, endothelium is the simple squamous that lines all our blood vessels. So do not confuse the three layers of the heart with the three layers of the pericardium. Not sure why students always do that, but they do. Don't. Pericardium means around the heart, okay? So here's a dissection too. This is the outer part of the, the heart. So we have our three layers. Um, here's our three layers of the heart wall right here. Here is the epicardium. They're pulling it off. This is simple squamous. This is also called visceral pericardium. Here is the myocardium, thick, thick muscle layer. And then they're pulling back the endocardium, which is also one layer thick. This is simple squamous. Here you can see the chordae tendine. So we know we're in a, in a ventricle here, most likely the left ventricle, This because this myocardium is pretty thick. So three layers of the heart wall, epicardium, myocardium, and endocardium. Remember, endocardium and epicardium is one layer thick, simple squamous. Then I just wanted to show you a normal chest x-ray, how your heart looks in your thoracic cavity. Here you can see the clavicle, um, the ribs, the sternum. Here's the right side of the heart. Here's the apex of the heart. Here is the lining. Uh, here's the outline of the diaphragm. Here we see the diaphragm right here. So remember the heart is sitting right on top of that diaphragm. So that's it for this video. Nothing else here. But main thing, know where the heart's located in the thoracic cavity. Know your pericardial sac and know your three layers of the cardiac wall. So one more video on the hearts coming up. Bye!